Hello everyone, welcome to our guide on utilizing human machine interface and programmable logic controller to perform the origin point return control of a stepper motor. Today, we'll walk you through the complete setup process from component introduction to system testing. Let's start by introducing the major components used in this demonstration. Here are the physical components used in this demonstration. You can find them all on ATO.com. For detailed information, visit our website or click the product links in the video description. Here is the diagram that illustrates the system's circuit design for your reference. To begin, connect the PLC to the HMI and the stepper motor and driver. Ensure the power supply is correctly wired to provide the necessary voltage. Connect the proximity sensors to the PLC for accurate positioning feedback. Next, let's take a look at the wiring connections for PLC and driver in particular. This is the PLC wiring. And here is the wiring of the motor driver. Now, let's configure the motor driver settings. Pay special attention to the parts marked with red boxes and red text. The specific setting method should be determined based on the parameters of the stepper motor. The settings provided here are for reference only. In this setup, the motor is configured to complete one full rotation for every 400 pulses received. Following the wiring, we need to program the PLC to communicate with the HMI and interpret input from the proximity sensors. For detailed instructions on these settings, please refer to a video on the ATO channel titled HMI and PLC Programming and Testing. Let's start by configuring the parameters in the Pulse Output 1 section of the PLC settings. You can customize these settings according to your requirements. In this program, the undefined origin is set to hold, meaning that when a limit input signal is received, the pulse output stops and the motor maintains its previous state. Next, set the limit input signal operation to search only, ensuring that the clockwise counterclockwise limit input signals are solely used for origin searches. Select the normally closed contact for the limit input signal corresponding to the proximity switch. Set the initial speed for search return to 400 pulses per second. Proceed to define the origin operation settings. Enable the use of the defined origin operation and set the search direction to counterclockwise for the origin search. Choose detection method 2, indicating that only the origin input signal is received without utilizing the proximity input signal. Set the search operation to inverse 1, meaning that if a limit input signal is received while the motor is moving in the origin search direction, the motor's direction will reverse. Set the operation mode to mode 0, which determines whether I.O. signals are used for the origin search. Mode 0 indicates that I.O. signals are needed for origin search when the stepper motor connected to the PLC does not have a position completion signal. Select normally closed contact for the origin input signal corresponding to the proximity sensor. In this example, there is no need to set the proximity input signal. Follow the specified rules to set the search high speed and search proximity speed to 800 and 600 respectively. Similarly, adhere to the guidelines when setting the search acceleration deceleration ratio, adjusting the acceleration and deceleration speeds within the allowed range according to the requirements of the origin search. This concludes the programming steps for pulse output 1 in the PLC. The programming steps for PLC discussed here align with the content covered in our previous video on controlling the stepper motor forward and reverse using the PLC. You can find this video on our ATO channel or by clicking the link provided in the video description. Next, let's delve into the logic of the PLC origin search program. Click on W0.02 to initiate the execution of the origin search on pulse output port 1, which then stops at the origin position automatically. Press W0.03 to halt the pulse output on pulse output port 1. CW limit and CCW limit represent the forward and reverse limit input signals, which must be written into the corresponding auxiliary area bits. Now let's move on to HMI programming. In the HMI programming interface, create four buttons, forward, reverse, origin search, and stop output pulse. Double-clicking on a button opens the parameter settings window. The forward button links to PLC address W0.0. In the PLC ladder logic diagram, the forward button corresponds to the symbols forward start, forward stop. The reversal button is linked to PLC address W0.01. In the PLC ladder logic diagram, this button controls the commands of reverse start and reverse stop. The origin search button is linked to PLC address W0.02. This button is used to initiate origin search in the PLC ladder logic diagram. The stop output pulse button is linked to PLC address W0.03. This button is aimed to stop output pulse in the PLC ladder logic diagram. Additionally, three indicator lights have been set up to reflect the current motor and status. 
The CCW limit indicator light is linked to PLC input 0.01, which symbolizes the CCW limit input in the PLC ladder logic diagram. The CW limit indicator light is linked to PLC input 0.00, referring to the CW limit input in the PLC ladder logic diagram. The origin indicator light is linked to PLC input 0.07. Now, let's proceed with testing the entire stepper motor control system. Now that we have the sliding block stopping to the left of the origin sensor, click the origin search button on the HMI to activate the OPR function. And observe the movement of sliding block as it accurately homes to its origin point based on the input from the sensors. The homing algorithm also applies when reversing the motor's movement. Press the reversal button to drive the motor in opposite direction. You can see the block starts moving in CCW direction. Within the detection range of the origin proximity sensor, the indicator lights on the HMI displays the current motor position and the sensor's status. Now press the origin search button to ask the motor to return the block to the origin position. Let us show you the other situation where we press the forward button to make the motor-driven block move in CW direction. Then press the origin search button. You will find the block returning to the origin position. This completes the entire operation process of how to connect and set up the PLC and HMI for origin point return control of a stepper motor. Hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section below. For all the components featured in this demonstration, visit ATO.com or check the product links in the video description. At ATO, we offer a variety of products and solutions for electrical engineering and industrial automation. Feel free to visit our official website for more information or to request the latest quotations. Thank you for watching. If you found our content helpful, please like and share. Don't forget to explore other exciting videos on our channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest insights and best practices on electrical engineering and industrial automation. See you until next time.